shouted. It's a lie, a wicked, cruel lie. How could anyone love their son more than I did? Haven't I lived only for his memory all these years? That was rather a mistake, Pam. In your heart of hearts, you know it was. What was a mistake? All that ten years' ritual of grief, keeping his room exactly as he'd left it, keeping anniversaries, refusing to leave that house, though Dick and Muriel were both wretched there. Of course they didn't care. I know that. I soon learned to expect no real sympathy from them. You're wrong. No man ever felt his son's death more than Dick. Not many girls loved their brothers better than Muriel. It wasn't against Michael they revolted. It was against you. Against having their whole life dominated by the tyranny of the past, and not really even Michael's past, but your past. You are heartless. Everyone is heartless. The past was all I had. It was all you chose to have. It was the wrong way to deal with a sorrow. It was Egyptian, like embalming a dead body. Oh, of course I'm wrong. Everything I say or do is wrong, according to you. But of course, said the spirit, shining with love and mirth, so that my eyes were dazzled. That's what we all find when we reach this country. We've all been wrong. That's the great joke. There's no need to go on pretending one was right. After that, we begin living. How dare you laugh about it? Give me my boy, do you hear? I don't care about all your rules and regulations. I don't believe in a God who keeps mother and son apart. I believe in a God of love. No one has a right to come between me and my son, not even God. Tell him that to his face. I want my boy, and I mean to have him. He is mine, do you understand? Mine, 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 forever and ever. He will be, Pam. Everything will be yours. God himself will be yours. But not that way. Nothing can be yours by nature. What? Not my own son, born out of my own body? And where is your own body now? Didn't you know that nature draws to an end? Look, the sun is coming, over the mountains there. It will be up any moment now. Michael is mine. How, yours? You didn't make him. Nature made him to grow in your body without your will, even against your will. You sometimes forget that you didn't intend to have a baby then at all. Michael was originally an accident. Who told you that? said the ghost, and then recovering itself. It's a lie. It's not true, and it's no business of yours. I hate your religion, and I hate and despise your God. I believe in a God of love. And yet, Pam, you have no love at this moment for your own mother, or for me. Oh, I see. That's the trouble, is it? Really, Reginald, the idea of your being hurt because— Lord love you, said the spirit with a great laugh. You needn't bother about that. Don't you know that you can't hurt anyone in this country? The ghost was silent and open-mouthed for a moment, more wilted, I thought, by this reassurance than by anything else that had been said. Come, we will go a bit further, said my teacher, laying his hand on my arm. Why did you bring me away, sir? said I, when we had passed out of earshot of this unhappy ghost. It might take a long while, that conversation said my teacher, and you have heard enough to see what the choice is. Is there any hope for her, sir? Aye, there's some. What she calls her love for her son has turned into a poor, prickly, astringent sort of thing, but there's still a wee spark of something that's not just herself in it, that might be blown into a flame. Then some natural feelings are really better than others. I mean, are a better starting point for the real thing. Better and worse. There's something in natural affection which will lead it on to eternal love more easily than natural appetite could be led on. But there's also something in it which makes it easier to stop at the natural level and mistake it for the heavenly. Brass is mistaken for gold more easily than plus is mistaken for gold more easily than clay is. And if it finally refuses conversion, its corruption will be worse than the corruption of what you call the lower passions. It is a stronger angel, and therefore, when it falls, a fiercer devil. I don't know that I dare repeat this on earth, sir, said I. They'd say I was inhuman. They'd say I believed in total depravity. They'd say I was attacking the best and the holiest things. They'd call me. It might do you no harm if they did, said he with... I really thought, a twinkle in his eye. But could one dare? 
Could one have the face to go to a bereaved mother in her misery when one's not bereaved oneself? No, no, son, that's no office of yours. You're not a good enough man for that. When your own heart's been broken, it will be time for you to think of talking. But someone must say in general what's been unsaid among you this many a year, that love, as mortals understand the word, isn't enough. Every natural love will rise again and live forever in this country, but none will rise again until it has been buried. The saying is almost too hard for us. Ah, but it's cruel not to say it. They that know have grown afraid to speak. That is why sorrows that used to purify now only fester. Keats was wrong, then, when he said he was certain of the holiness of the heart's affections. I doubt if he knew clearly what he meant, but you and I must be clear. There is but one good, and that is God. Everything else is good when it looks to Him, and bad when it turns from Him. And the higher and mightier it is in the natural order, the more demoniac it will be if it rebels. It's not out of bad mice or bad fleas you make demons, but out of bad archangels. The false religion of lust is baser than the false religion of mother love, or patriotism, or art. But lust is less likely to be made into a religion. But look. I saw coming towards us a ghost who carried something on his shoulder. Like all the ghosts, he was unsubstantial, but they differed from one another as smokes differ. Some had been whitish. This one was dark and oily. What sat on his shoulder was a little red lizard, and it was twitching its tail like a whip and whispering things in his ear. As we caught sight of him, he turned his head to the reptile with a snarl of impatience. Shut up, I tell you, he said. It wagged its tail and continued to whisper to him. He ceased snarling and presently began to smile. Then he turned and started to limp westward, away from the mountains. "'Off so soon?' said a voice. The speaker was more or less human in shape, but larger than a man, and so bright that I could hardly look at him. His presence smote on my eyes and on my body, too, for there was heat coming from him as well as light, like the morning sun at the beginning of a tyrannous summer day. "'Yes, I'm off,' said the ghost. "'Thanks for all your hospitality, but it's no good, you see. I told this little chap—' here he indicated the lizard, that he'd have to be quiet if he came, which he insisted on doing. Of course his stuff won't do here, I realize that, but he won't stop. I shall just have to go home. Would you like me to make him quiet? said the flaming spirit, an angel as I now understood. Of course I would, said the ghost. Then I will kill him, said the angel, taking a step forward. Oh, ah, uh, look out, you're burning me. Keep away said the ghost, retreating. "'Don't you want him killed?' "'You didn't say anything about killing him at first. I hardly meant to bother you with anything so drastic as that.' "'It's the only way,' said the angel, whose burning hands were now very close to the lizard. "'Shall I kill it?' "'Well, that's a further question. I'm quite open to consider it, but it's a new point, isn't it? I mean, for the moment I was only thinking about silencing it, because up here, well, it's so damned embarrassing.' May I kill it? Well, there's time to discuss that later. There is no time. May I kill it? Please, I never meant to be such a nuisance. Please, really, don't bother. Look, it's gone to sleep of its own accord. I'm sure it'll be all right now. Thanks ever so much. May I kill it? Honestly, I don't think there's the slightest necessity for that. I'm sure I shall be able to keep it in order now. I think the gradual process would be far better than killing it. The gradual process is of no use at all. Don't you think so? Well, I'll think over what you've said very carefully. I honestly will. In fact, I'd let you kill it now, but as a matter of fact, I'm not feeling frightfully well today. It would be silly to do it now. I'd need to be in good health for the operation. Some other day, perhaps. There is no other day. All days are present now. Get back. You're burning me. How can I tell you to kill it? You'd kill me if you did. It is not so. Why, you're hurting me now. I never said it wouldn't hurt you. I said it wouldn't kill you. Oh, I know. You think I'm a coward. But it isn't that. Really, it isn't. I say, let me run back by tonight's bus and get an opinion from my own doctor. I'll come again the first moment I can. This moment contains all moments. Why are you torturing me? You're jeering at me. 
How can I let you tear me to pieces? If you wanted to help me, why didn't you kill the damn thing without asking me, before I knew? It would be all over by now if you had. I cannot kill it against your will. It is impossible. Have I your permission? The angel's hands were almost closed on the lizard, but not quite. Then the lizard began chattering to the ghost, so loud that even I could hear what it was saying. Be careful, it said. He can do what he says. He can kill me. One fatal word from you, and he will. Then you'll be without me, forever and ever. It's not natural. How could you live? You'd be only a sort of ghost, not a real man as you are now. He doesn't understand. He's only a cold, bloodless, abstract thing. It may be natural for him, but it isn't for us. Yes, yes, I know there are no real pleasures now, only dreams. But aren't they better than nothing? And I'll be so good. I admit I've sometimes gone too far in the past, but I promise I won't do it again. 